The Division II National Championship game in Florence, Alabama will be a meeting of two of the most dynamic offenses in the country. Led by Oklahoma transfer Caden Cochran, Valdosta State is looking for its third title in nine seasons. Meanwhile, Cameron Smith and Winston-Salem State are trying to become the first historically black university to capture the Division II trophy. Championship dreams are on the line. This is the 2012 NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. From Florence, Alabama, it's Valdosta State with a record of 11-2 out of the Gulf South Conference taking on the Winston-Salem State Rams. The Rams come in with a perfect record of 14-0 out of the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Both of these teams with high-powered offenses, and that is how they advance to the championship game for the Rams. Quarterback Cam Smith throwing for two touchdowns, running for another, while Valdosta racked up 498 yards of total offense in the road win over Minnesota State. Hello and welcome to the campus of the University of North Alabama. I'm Eamon McEnany, happy to be joined once again by David Diaz-Infante. We will hear from Paul Carcaterra down on the field in just a minute. But David, you played in two Super Bowls, so you know better than anybody what's it, what it's like to take the field after a whole season of weightlifting, practices, games, film sessions, and here it is, it all boils down to one game for these two teams. Oh boy, I certainly do, and I can feel it right now, and you can feel the energy in the stadium, both these teams. Matters how they handle the pressure, the week of preparation, not just on the field, but off the field as well. Valdosta State has been here before. We'll see if Winston-Salem State can handle as well. Both these teams deserve to be here, and I love the pure playoff format of the National Championship. Where else can you see the number 17 team in the country take on the number two team in the country for all the marbles? Two explosive offenses, it's going to be exciting. You mentioned Valdosta State ranked 17th in the country mainly because of a slow start out of the shoot back in September. Yeah, and for the Blazers, they started 2-2. Two and two. It was after their loss to Western Alabama. Uh, they really decided to re recommit themselves. They lost their focus. They decided to go one practice at a time, one game at a time. And then they rattled off nine straight victories. They're a balanced team. They run the football. They throw the football. And Cochran, their quarterback, knows how to get it done. Like I said, they've been here before. They know how to handle this process. As for Winston-Salem State, the Rams last year had a perfect regular season as well, but came up short in the playoffs. They want to finish the deal here in 2012. They certainly do, and they are a talented, fast football team. And like I said, they have gone undefeated through the season. They're explosive on offense. They have athletes all over the field. They have fought into their coach's system, and that's why they find themselves 14-0 right now, a dynamic quarterback, and they believe they have more athletes in the field than most any other teams in Division II. Not just looking for the first title in school history, but looking to become the first HBCU school to win the Division II National Championship. And as we've alluded to, both teams led by their offenses. Yeah, you look at the Blazers offensively, they rush the ball for over 200 yards, and the strength of their team is really their offensive line. They protect their quarterback, they allow them to distribute the ball to an outstanding core of wide receivers. Now, like I said, they've been here before, they've played in close games, and they play with that kind of confidence. They're not going to be deterred. They look at the Rams, explosive offensively. They're not afraid to go five wide outs. They'll put a tight end. They'll run with the fullback. They're diverse and multiple on the offensive side of the game. Both these offenses very productive, and you see them averaging over 42 points a game. The Rams of Winston-Salem State looking to make history. Which team's defense can step up and make a stand? Valdosta State looking to win it for the first time since 2007. We are back to Alabama with the opening kickoff of the 2012 NCAA Division II National Championship game. Welcome back to Florence, Alabama, moments away from the kickoff of the Division II National Championship game. Valdosta State, as we mentioned, here in the title game for the fourth time in school history, their head coach David Dean won the National Championship in his first year back in 2007, now in his sixth season with a record of 53 wins and 17 losses. Connell Maynard, a great player in his own right at Winston-Salem State, now the head coach, his third season. 
A record of 35 and 3. Before we get started here, let's send it down to the field and check in with Paul Carcaterra. Eamon, when Connell Maynard came to Winston-Salem State three years ago, he took over a program that was 1-10. When I asked him this week what the journey to 14-0 was like, he mentioned that he had to challenge players' commitments to football to see if the players had what it took to be champions. The hard work and dedication was questioned. Many had asked themselves if football the Maynard way was for them. The seniors on this team, like center Marcus Lawrence and linebacker Kendra Reed, who experienced 1-10 and are now 14-0, are tremendous leaders who know hard work is paying off and is positioning this program to win its first national championship. All right, Paul, thank you very much. Here in the Shoals region of Alabama, a damp morning has given away to some sunshine dry right now as we take a look at the temperature 57 degrees but there still remains a chance of rain winston-salem state won the toss the rams elected to defer so late and fair will start the festivities number 26 matt pierce back to return winston-salem state in the red jerseys and white pants valdosta white jerseys with the black helmets and black numbers we are underway from florence this is Pierce from the four. Across the 20, has the seam in the open field. One man to beat, he is passed there. At the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Valdosta. 96 yards. What a way to start. Daniel Anderson out for the point after. And that is good. Pierce, known for his ability as a defensive back to come up with interceptions, returns a kickoff for the touchdown for the first time since November 2011. We told you there were going to be fireworks. We didn't expect it to happen on the very first play from scrimmage as Matt Pierce takes the kickoff return. You see him hit the seam, hit north and south. He makes the kicker miss, and no one's going to catch a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Their main kickoff return guy has been Quinn Robertson, number four. But Pierce, the senior out of New Orleans, gets things going in a big way. State last year returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown so this has happened before but I tell you what how does Winston-Salem State respond they have a pretty strong kickoff returner themselves right there in Jamez Massey short kick this is Massey from the 16 Short kick allows the coverage to get out there, tackled at the 25 by Davis Durham. Now let's take a look at our Northwestern Mutual game plan for success. And you'll see for the Blazers, red zone dominance. They average 90 percent, 47 touchdowns, six field goals. They've been very good in the red zone. They've got to eliminate explosive plays. They've been burned by that during the course of the season, especially in their defensive secondary. And for the Rams, offensive balance, run and pass game got to be together. Your plus 19 in turnover margin, got to create some turnovers. Three wide receivers for Smith. Looking to air it out down the sidelines. His receiver has a step, and that's Massey. A pickup of 37 yards. Interestingly enough, they went right to work on number 26, Matt Pierce. Wonder if Matt Pierce was still a little tired from that kickoff return. 
but this is what the Rams can do. They believe their athletes are better than the other teams. They're going to look for the one-on-one -on -one isolation, and then they find Massey up the sideline. He averaged over 20 yards a catch going in this game. Massey, bottom of your screen, being guarded by Pierce again, but they give it to Lewis on the ground, and he is met right away by Chris Pope. There's a look at Cameron Smith, fifth-year senior out of Garner, North Carolina. Injured his shoulder earlier in the postseason, but came back to rally the team to victory over Indiana University, Pennsylvania, but a standout campaign. Yeah, you look at that touchdown to interception ratio. He's a guy who knows how to take care of the football. He's an athlete at the quarterback position, but he's a quarterback first. Second and nine to throw. Looking to set up the screen for Massey. Well read by Pierce and the Valdosta defense. Lawrence Virgil right there up the middle. He is a difference maker for the Rams on defense. He's 6'5", 280 pounds. Not your typical Division II defensive lineman. He's disruptive in the middle as we take a look at Matt Pierce. So now third and nine. They empty the backfield. Five wide receivers for the Rams. Ten on the play clock. Smith over the middle. Pierce in coverage. No flags. Looking for Jawan Butler. Pierce knocks it away. Now fourth and long for Connell Maynard. He says the head coach doesn't like to kick. That makes things rough for the offense coordinator. Well, I tell you, they go for it more on fourth down than anybody. You'll see right here the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Matt Pierce, great break on the football. Left hand behind, right hand out in front. There he is, the offensive coordinator and head coach going for it here early on fourth and nine. From the Valdosta 36, the pump. He's got an open man. Big hit. Isaiah Gresham came over and knocked out Jawan Butler. Cameron Smith loves a double move, and Jawan Butler's off and at the other end of it. He pump fakes, look at the shoulder turn. He's got his receiver, Butler, there. The ball is on time, but you see the perfect timing of the hit by Isaiah Gresham to separate Butler from the football. Shoulder there, great hit, well played. You gotta love that, that's big time. So now, the Blazers go to work on offense for the first time. Caden Cochran is the quarterback. With time to throw, ball hit at the line. Let's send it down to Paul Carcaterra down on the field. I'm right next to Juwan Butler as he came off the field after that last pop. Shaken up, just got the wind knocked out of him. Expect the star receiver to be on the next possession for Winston-Salem State when they get on offense. Second and 10 from the 37. Cedric O'Neal, the back. This is him with the ball right now. Cuts back. He has open field. Nice tackle there by Cameron Malcolm Rowe, number 13. Looked like he was going the distance as well. And you'll see, that's one thing that the uh, Blazers will do offensively. They don't play at the fullback. The wide receivers are effective in the run game, and they use him as a decoy at that time. Quinn Robertson, as they get the ball to Cedric O'Neal, and opens up that left side of the line. Offensive line combining for 135 career starts coming into this game. First and 10. From the 49, the screen to Reginald Lewis. He gets into Ram territory, but a short pickup. And that's really the matchup we're going to really look for. You talked about the offensive line, those 135 combined starts. That is the strength of their football team. And also the defensive line of Winston-Salem State. They are the strength. They'll rotate eight guys in there. They only give up 87 yards a game. And Valdosta rushes for over 200. Now a tight formation for the Blazers. O'Neal still in the backfield with Cochran. This is Robertson in motion. Cochran steps up, pumps, gets O'Neal. He makes a man miss and holds on to it. So Cedric O'Neal with the grab for a first down. 
14 yard pickup. Cochran showing some mobility on that one. Yeah, Caden Cochran, he is an athletic quarterback. Recruited is going to switch the wide receiver to Oklahoma. You see him pull the ball down. He knows how to take care of the football. And then just great timing and understanding between him and Cedric O'Neill in terms of uncovering downfield and making an accurate throw. So now they empty the backfield and spread things out. Cochran on the rollout. He's going to keep. Moran string it out pretty well. Carlos Fields making the tackle. You mentioned Cochran spending some time in Norman with the Sooners. Or walk on there. We talked about he really is a very good athlete at the quarterback position. Uh, he knows what to do with the football. He's smart with it, takes care of it, and runs enough to be effective that the defense must contend with him. He was a state champ in the 100 meters in high school. Class AA state champ in Oklahoma. Again, the empty backfield. Five wide receivers here on second and eight. Quick release. Lewis makes the grab. Daniel Mungin takes him out of bounds. So that'll bring up third. Looks like about two or three. And that's one thing about Cochran. He distributes the ball around to a variety of wide receivers. He commands the game at the line of scrimmage. And they put a lot on him uh, and give him a lot of responsibility at the line of scrimmage. You'll see him demonstrate that here today. Third and three. Two tight ends. Here's O'Neal. As a hole, quickly closed by Rowe. Close to the marker. And they're saying short, fourth down. So at the 24 yard line of Winston Salem. Coach Dean's going to keep his offense out there. When the strength of your team is the offensive line, this is an area where you can go for it. It's a national championship game. There is no tomorrow. I love this call of going for it. Hang the hat on your offensive line. Four players on that offensive line. First team all conference. First time in the Gulf South history that's ever happened. They give it to O'Neill, and he has a huge hole. At the 15, at the 10, the five touchdown Blazers. O'Neill goes 24 yards to make it a 13-0 Blazer lead. And that time, too, the Blazers come in with six offensive linemen. That's, form of, that's their form of a heavy formation. That offensive line does a great job on that inside zone. And Cedric O'Neal is off to a great start here today. Illegal substitution, 12 men on the field offense. The penalty is accepted, but the yardage is declined. So a penalty on the Rams before the kick will be enforced on the kickoff. Now Anderson back out there for a second PAT turn early here in Florence. And it is 14-0 Blazers. So Valdosta and Coach Dean looking for their first title since 2007. They've been here before and they were ready for the big time moment right from the start. First it was Pierce taking the opening kickoff to the house. And Cedric O'Neill from 24 yards out, and just like that, the Rams are in a 14-0 hole. Capital. NCAA Division II College Football Championship is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. Here's a look at the well at the Home Gardens and Museum of Helen Keller in nearby Tuscumbia, Alabama on a spring day in 1887. And Sullivan pumped water into one of Helen Keller's hands while repeatedly tapping out the alphabet code of water. And here at Florence, Alabama, Valdosta State out to an early 14-0 lead thanks to their offensive line. Yeah, watch this offensive line in center. Jake Thomas is going to get everybody on the same page. They're going to let one man go off the edge. 
They've got an extra offensive lineman right here. And now they will double team at the point of attack, run inside zone. The center gets up on the linebacker and watch that offensive line get Cedric O'Neill to the second level. And he just powers his way into the end zone. O'Neill, a true freshman with a tremendous work ethic. Goes 24 yards for the score. Jake Walker on to kick again. Bryce Sherman. And there's a look at Massey back to return. Another high but short kick, and it'll be Sherman from the 12. Makes a move. Still on his feet across the 25 out to about the 27, which is where the Rams will go to work. DeMonte Ridley with the tackle for the Blazers. Foreign territory for Cam Smith in this club. The biggest deficit they rallied from all year was down 9 nothing to Elizabeth City State back on November 10th. They went on to win that game big, 34-19. to So, David, what do you think the key, the messages here from Coach Maynard are trying to regroup after getting hit by two knockout blows? Yeah, well, they've just got to calm down. They've got to retain that confidence they have in their offense and sustain the drive right here. That's the biggest thing they need to do. Lewis, the back, has it there, nothing doing at all, a loss. As he was swarmed by the Black Swarm, Tyler Josie and Lawrence Virgil leading the way. Let's take a look at the impact players for the Rams. We talk about the outstanding quarterback, Cameron Smith, 42 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. He's a dual threat athlete. He's going to have to get them going now. And Massey, he's a big play guy in the run game and as a receiver, as a speed sweep guy and in the screen game as well. And Carlos Field, the middle linebacker, leads that defense instinctive. Great ability to diagnose. He plays with speed, and he is a hitter. So it's a loss of three. The play fake to Lewis. Smith with time over the middle. Has Massey for a first down. He gets across the 45, brought down by Lance Holder. A 22-yard pickup. And his teammates are looking. They're looking to Cameron Smith. How's he going to handle himself? How's he respond and lead this offense right now when they're reeling just a little bit? That was a confident throw, an accurate throw to a wide-open Massey. Smith in the third year in this system. That's the strength here on the rollout. Catch made at the 50. That's Taven Brantley. The junior out of Durham, North Carolina, brings it into Valdosta territory. Holder with another tackle. And now it'll be second and five for Smith. And the Ram offense as they look over to Coach Maynard and get the play. Ten on the play clock. The pitch to Lewis. Fumble! Blazers come up with it. Lance Holder. The recovery, Ryan Smith with the strip. All Valdosta right now here in Florence. We'll see that defensive line of the Blazers take charge. Look. They outnumber him at the point of attack. The slot receiver cannot block. Number 31, Ryan Smith, causes the fumble. And the Blazers recover the fumble. And I tell you what, it's all going their way right now. Defense coordinator Seth Wallace telling us Ryan Smith, the most athletic guy on the team. Some NFL scouts have come to check him out just based on his pure athleticism. So now a perfect opportunity for Cochran in this offense as there's a flag before the snap. Going to be a false start on Valdosta. Gerald Ford, false start. 19. Number 19. Offense. Five yard penalty. And that'll back up the First Blazers. Down. Still looking to take advantage of the 30 second turnover created by that man's defense. Coach David Dean. And it's really been the Blazers through the playoffs that have had to come back from deficits. Now they find themselves on top early. What they've got to do is find a way to keep the pressure on Winston Salem. Four wide receivers for Cochran O'Neill in the backfield. Cochran still has it. Decides not to pitch it and goes down. Justin Wilkerson there for the tackle. And 
Nice discipline by the defense of the Rams, led by Justin Wilkerson. And Dominique Tate, the safety, to play that option out on the edge. So a loss of two makes it, excuse me, pickup of three makes it third and 12. Cochran steps up, gets hit. Donnie Owens. You'll see this defensive line. It's the strength of the Rams defense. See the double move right there by number 49, Donnie Owens. Then he spins. That is relentless pursuit of the quarterback. You're going to see him. You don't beat him the first time. It's your second move that gets there as he spins off, comes back to the inside as Caden Cochran tries to climb the pocket. So you hate to say a play is critical with seven minutes left in the first half, but the Rams really need a stop here on third and 13 in the first quarter. They dump it off to O'Neal. He makes one man miss. Still on his feet. Breaks another tackle, but gets brought down from behind. Owens, Pulliam, and Mungin involved in the tackle. So now David Dean close enough to think about going for it on fourth and four, but he's going to send out the punting team. Well, I tell you what, it's great to see Cedric O'Neill last week. Held only four attempts and three yards rushing. The week before, he was a man with 194 yards against Carson Newman. Last week was Austin Scott. These guys take turns. Now Anderson out there looking to pin the Rams inside the 10. And look at that high kick. Perfect bounce and placement and down at the 8. There is a flag down about the 7-yard line. 35-yard kick. If there's an advantage in special teams, it's got to go to Valdosta State. Winston-Salem has issues in special teams all season long. There's no foul on the play. There's 11 players on defense. The Rams looking to get something going here in the Division II National Championship game. Valdosta State up by 14. San Diego State, football. USC, soccer. Quincy University, volleyball. <laughs> Welcome back to Florence, Alabama. The Winston-Salem State Band trying to fire up the Ram football team as the Rams are down early, 14-0 to Valdosta State. Valdosta State in Georgia. Salem State obviously in North Carolina as we see the Blazers traveling 430 miles. The Ram fans a little bit more, but both out here in uh, full force. Both talking some friendly smack at breakfast today in the hotel as the uh, fans have made it here to Florence, Alabama. We have certainly enjoyed our time here in the Shoreland region. Look at some of the information about Florence incorporated back in 1826. Tennessee River, named after Florence, Italy. They put on quite a ceremony this weekend for this championship game. We were able to make it to the banquet yesterday. Some great Southern hospitality on display. Yeah, I tell you what, the whole town just gets into this championship game. They take pride in it, and the hospitality has been second to none. So now Smith, delayed handoff to Sherman. Sherman has a big hole across the 25, up over the 30, so a big play on the ground for the Rams. Now let's check in with Max Bredos back in the studio. Thanks, Eamon. And a studio update from the Gildan New Mexico Bowl, Nevada out of the Mountain West, Arizona out of the Pac-12, and the Wolf Pack have struck first. Stephon Jefferson from 16 yards out. This game with five minutes to go in the first quarter. Back to Eamon and Dave. All right, Max, thanks. Another play fake. Smith in the pocket finds Massey, who spins into Blazer territory. Pierce with the tackle. But Jamez Massey with another catch. You can see, even in their first three possessions, the explosive ability of this Rams offense. They have playmakers all over. What they've got to do is sustain these drives. Smith now under center. Delay handoff to Sherman. He gets hit right away by Jeremy Grable. Nothing doing on that draw for Sherman. Sherman had a big game last week for Coach Maynard, as David mentioned. Maurice Lewis had as well, but Sherman 73 yards and a touchdown as they beat West Texas A&M. 
The Indiana game was where there was drama as Cameron Smith came off the bench, played through pain to rally them to victory, and then the Shippensburg, the 23-point win. Another delay handoff. Sherman makes a man miss, but gets tripped up. Thought he was past Andrew Lauritsen. I don't know if that was 74, the turf monster that got Sherman. Looked like he had some room to move. Well, Bryce Sherman is one of the fastest players on the field. You'll see his ability. He's got big playability written all over. Watch a little sprint draw. He's going to cut it back all the way against the grain, and the turf monster got him there. That's what happens when you're too fast. I, never, I don't know if that's life, but people tell me about it. Also, when you play your home games on natural grass and you come here to the artificial stuff. So they empty the backfield. Five wide receivers on third and 11 from the 50. Rams desperately need a drive here. Smith with time. Floats it over the middle, knocked down, and then picked off by Tevin Davis. What a play by big number 46. what they do defensively. Tevin Davis is going to drop into the short area. He's just going to read the quarterback's eyes and get in the throwing lane and gets up and makes an athletic play. That's an area kind of zone drop by the defensive end that a quarterback doesn't expect to see, especially when they didn't send any other defensive line. There's no blitz pressure. It was too deep man. Linebacker in high school looked like one on that play. Again, Caden Cochran in the Blazer offense in great field position. Sometimes life can be, well, a little uncomfortable. But when it's hard or hurts to go to the bathroom, there's Dole Collect Stool Sock. Paul Carcaterra in Florence, Alabama. Valdosta State leading Winston-Salem State 14-0 in the Division II National Championship game. Valdosta State quarterback Caden Cochran grew up in Oklahoma and walked on the Sooner football team out of high school. On May 23rd, 2011, his family lost their home in a tornado. Pursuing a scholarship opportunity, Cochran landed in Valdosta. His family was forced to move apart until they eventually fixed up an old 1930s farmhouse where Cochran's father grew up and moved in this summer. When the family returned from Valdosta's game on Sunday in Minnesota, that house was burned to the ground. Coach David Dean told us this week, amazingly, through these difficult times, Cochran's focus is on his team. His family travels to every game and are in attendance today. His father, Chris, said they'd worry about their living arrangements after the championship game. All right, Paul. There's a look at Chris Cochran, the family on hand, his wife, Carrie. And there is Caden Cochran as the Blazers come out in the Wildcat with Reginald Lewis as the quarterback. There is Lewis running to the left. Bounces outside. And then gets gang tackled. Hit pretty hard there by Carlos Fields. Fields and Maurice Harris. Now Caden Cochran back out onto the field. Played Eight-man football growing up in Oklahoma at the start of his high school career. Now here's Austin Scott. Short gain there. Brought down by Daniel Mungin. Mungin Jr. out of Savannah. You mentioned Austin Scott last week. 158 yards with 21 carries and a touchdown. I really like his demeanor when he runs with the football. So now third and four again, that Winston-Salem D trying to come up with a stop to keep it at 14-0. Cocker with time. Incomplete. Looking for Robertson. Throwing off his back foot. So good coverage by the Ram defense. Fourth and four now for David Dean. Big Barry trip providing some pressure there. Of course, Cocker to throw that ball off his back foot. Got to be careful going the wide side of the field off your back foot. That's where INTs happen, so got away with one there. So it looks like, oh, they're going to go Wildcat. Reginald Lewis 
Massey's back to receive. It looks like the Rams are in punt formation. And now Lewis is back there as a Wildcat. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So they were trying to draw the Rams offsides. Now, punting isn't exactly a bad thing for Coach Dean because you take a look at their numbers. Valdosta State has held opponents to only 22 yards on punt returns this year. That's 10 of 59 punts have been returned. So Anderson knows how to get that hang time on it and let everyone get down there and pin them inside the 10. Well, David's Dean team is complete and well coached in every phase of the game. His special teams are definite strength of this football team. Massey back on his 10, waiting to return. Anderson gets into this one. Massey, fair catch signal right at the 10. So mission accomplished by Anderson and the special teams unit. A 37-yard punt in the Rams. Breakthrough on offense. We'll return to Alabama after this. Let's do this. Right behind you. Welcome back to Florence. 2.57 left to play in the opening quarter. Winston-Salem State down 14-0. The offense looking for some rhythm, but you got to credit the Black Swarm defense of Valdosta State. That's right. Uh, the Blazers defense has been on fire. They've been playing a little bit faster than Winston-Salem. Doesn't happen more. And more physical. Big hits, positive turnovers, the strip fumble there, the recovery, and then the INT. A great job by that defense throwing a three-man rush, and then it's Tevin Davis with the interception from the defensive end position. First and ten from the 11. Smith going up top. Massey gets tripped up, and there's the flag. Dominique Wheeler going to get called for interference. Pass interference. Number 21. It's 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic. First down. No doubt about this call. You see the speed of Massey, and he kind of gets tripped up, and I think he would have been fine, but his right hand goes up and grabs Massey in the back. Good call by the officials. And that brings it out to the 26. Juwan Butler and Jamal Williams lined up to the left. Massey top of your screen at the right. Quick screen. This is Williams. Pierce there to meet him. And then Jeremy Grable got over there as well. Take a look at the struggles of the Rams on offense. Complete foreign territory for this club this year. Yeah, absolutely. The first possession ended on downs as they went for it on fourth and didn't convert. And then a fumble and an interception by the Rams. It's hard to get. I don't care how explosive you are. You've got to get some continuation drives. Turnovers are the killer. And it's something they normally don't do. Now it looks like they flinched here on second and three, so that'll make it second and eight. False start. Number 85. Offense. Five yard pick. Second down. Obviously, Coach Maynard not happy with that call against Jerry Chandler. Senior at High Point, North Carolina. Yeah, that's a big tight end right there. He's hard to miss. He's really extension of the offensive line. So now trips to the right. They give it to Lewis. He fights through across the 30. Hit by Chris Pope and Tyler Josie. Tyler Josie, one of the leaders of that defensive front. Great job of scraping down the line of scrimmage. You see that black beard of theirs. Fear the beard, right? They started growing a bunch of guys on the team, and they won't shave until they win the national championship. All right, David, you're Coach Maynard. You got a third and three here. You had nothing going at all on offense. What are you dialing up? Uh, they talked about maintaining the balance. They've got to find a way to get the ball. I run it. There's the pitch to Lewis. Stiff arms, keeps his feet, goes out of bounds. Good job by Lewis to stiff arm Jeremy Grable. And they get the first down. And just another facet of this offense, a little speed option. They're really multiple what they do. Uh, as soon as you think they're going to be a downhill run team, all of a sudden speed option comes down on a critical down. They're able to get to the perimeter and convert. Back to Lewis. Lewis has a hole. Gets across the 45. Pope brings him down. 
NFL Sunday start on ESPN at 10 a.m. with Sunday NFL Countdown as Chris Berman and the gang have the latest news and updates from stadiums around the league right up to kickoff. And at 11 a.m. on ESPN2, Fantasy Football Now is the latest news and injury reports to help you set your lineups and predict the top fantasy performers. Critical games in the NFL this weekend. And then Lewis gets the handoff, fighting hard to get to midfield. Andrew Larson with the tackle. So another first down here for the Rams on this drive. Nice patience by Maurice Lewis. And allowing his blocks to develop and knowing where the first down marker was. He gets a break. Bryce Sherman back out there. He's there about an eight-second difference between the clock. So play for it. Smith with time. Now he has to run across the 50. Kirk Monster does it again. And that should do it for the first quarter. And even though he doesn't really like to run, he has the ability to get out in the open field. Winston-Salem State finally moving into Valdosta territory, but the first 15 minutes, all Blazers right from the opening get-go. David Dean saw Matt Pierce take the opening kickoff, 96 yards for a score. The defense made some big plays, and so did the run game. The Blazers off to a hot start. They're up 14-0. We're back with the second quarter after this. here at Brawley Municipal Stadium in Florence, Alabama. A national champion will be decided here today. And Valdosta State looking for the third in school history was ready to go right on the opening kickoff. In case you missed it, this is how the ball game started. Matt Pierce catches it on his four, hits the wedge, and he is off to the races. 96 yards later, 7-0 Blazers. And then the offensive line took over as well, David. Yeah, they sure did that front five and six with the just offensive line. Got things going, controlling the line of scrimmage. That is the strength of their football team. Cedric O'Neill going 24 yards from the score to make it 14-0. As you take a look at the stats, the defense for Winston-Salem State keeping the Rams in it after those two turnovers. Yeah, that was critical. Their defense certainly stepped up and forced two punts on the last two Blazer possessions. They're on second and five. They go back to Lewis to the left. Nothing doing whatsoever. It'll be third down when we return to Florence. But now, let's send it to Max Bredos in the studio. Hey, Damon, uh, the curtain raises to the bowl season. Nevada and Arizona, we were promised a wild one, and that's exactly what we are getting. Cody Fajardo to Zach Sudfeld to make it 21-7. We'll show you a wild episode from that game a little bit later. All right, Max, thanks. A big hit there by Isaiah Gresham, but not after Smith gets the first down on third and six. So they run the quarterback draw, and it was executed well. Well, Connell Maynard talked to us about he's such a good athlete, but they always try to manage his carries in the first half, and then they kind of unleash him when the game's on the line where he can create and make big plays for him, throwing the football and with his legs as well. Now they go to the I formation for Sherman. He cuts back. Big Robert Moore is the fullback there. The Pope and Grable with the tackle. This has been the money quarter for the Rams. Winston State outscoring its opponents 209 to 46 in the second 15 minutes. Wow. They need some points here, don't they? I call that dominating the second quarter, all right. And they need that kind of uh, output right here and right now. Maurice Lewis in the backfield. Fullback leading the way. Gresham came, comes up and makes the hit to force another third down for the Rams. You see Robert Moore, 275, the fullback, trying to get a block. That's good spring Lewis. That's when you're trying to get physical right there. <laughs> so now third and six again, looking for a conversion. They ran the draw for a pickup the last time. Now they empty the backfield five wide receivers. in the slot to the left. He's been the favorite target so far. 
To the out, too high. Coaching staff for Winston-Salem State looking for a call. There's a coach at Maynard getting after the officials, but it brings up a fourth down. Well, coach Maynard's not used to that. They love going to that empty formation. They feel they get their athletes one-on-one -on -one in space is an advantage for their team at all times. And they're going to do it again, this time from on the center. Fourth and six. Looking for a spark. Now Smith backs up. Eight on the play clock. Seven now. Three. Smith scrambles. Dumps it off. Catch made. It's Massey. Looks good. Looks right at the marker. I think it's going to be a little bit short. And again, you see Cameron Smith buying time with his legs. This is close. They're going to bring the chains all the way across the field. belong to David Diaz and Fonte who said they were short so a good open field tackle Maynard Bob obviously upset as he turns it over on downs again and you'll see the shallow crossing route by Macy right there it comes down short of the first down marker as Cameron Smith buys some times and makes the throw but again, the second time they'll turn it over on downs here in the first half of play. Magwood with a good tackle. So now look at the formation, top of your screen. Three wide receivers all bunched, looking like a relay team. This is Robertson. Carlos Fields with the tackle. Here's a look at Cochran's numbers. Now stacked up both sides on second and three. This is O'Neal. Hit hard right at the marker at about the 38. Hendre Reed with the stop. Malcolm Rowe involved as well. Yeah, Malcolm Rowe, he's like a linebacker playing that safety position, and he will lay the hammer on you coaches think he's got the ability to play at any level. 6'2", 200, great athlete. They say he can dunk with ease. So now a, another unique formation. You see stacked receivers on the slot there. And first and 10. This is Robertson on the dump off. Gets a step on the sideline, step out of bounds. They call it Title Town USA, Valdosta, not just because of the success of the college football team, but all the schools in that area. As you take a look at some of the information founded back in 1906, where we see two national championships. They love their football down there now. Coach Dean telling us, well, every day I drive to work, I drive past the sign that says Title Town USA. So, yeah, you can say there's a little bit of pressure on us. He loves it, though. Here they try it to the other side in Lewis. Into Ram territory. Run out of bounds by Reed. a look at the high school in Valdosta and there's some of the signs ESPN selecting Valdosta as title town USA a couple of years ago and even the fans are growing the beards I've done a high school game down there it is like the half of the course I mean those season tickets they get willed to the next generation <laughs> four wide receivers Lewis in the slot to the left O'Neal in the backfield first and ten from the 44 the delays on the zone leader O'Neal, full head of steam across the 40. Fields with another tackle. Dean took over in 2007 for Chris Hatcher, who went to Georgia Southern. 
Played his college ball at Georgia Tech. So in the title game for the fourth time in school history. Three wide receivers in the trip formation to the left. Austin Scott now in the backfield. This is Lewis. Good tackle by Fields in pursuit. It'll be another first down, though. Caden Cochran right now is just taking advantage. He sees the numbers games that he likes outside. The matchup with his wide receivers, whether they're stacking the receivers or going to the trip side, he finds a matchup he wants, and they put a lot on him at the line of scrimmage to decide where to go with the football. Scott in the backfield along with now four wide receivers set again on first and 10 from the 33. Here is Scott to the right, bounces it outside. Gets inside the 30. Now let's check in with Max Bredos in the studio. Guys, I had to show you this out in Albuquerque. You don't see this every day. Arizona down 21-0. Frustration bubbling over. Tevin Hood, Cody Ippolito, teammates throwing haymakers at each other. All right, Max. Certainly some interesting developments there for Rich Rodriguez's Wildcats. Back here in Alabama, the screen to Jones. His knee hit the ground. Now there's a flag. You'll see Cochran make the throw quickly outside to Shontavious Jones. The knee is down. Looked like it was down I, don't know. I, I agree. I thought he picked it up. We do have replay here in the Division II championship game. Looked like there was movement. And Scott breaks through. Chugs hard for another first down. Then starting to get chippy here. And now there's a flag. This could go against the Rams for offsides. Offsides. Number 55. Defense. That point is declined. The play results in a first down. And you see the jump there. He's in the neutral zone. And Austin Scott, he's the slasher in this offense. And both these running backs, one's a true freshman, one's a redshirt freshman. And they are carrying the load for the Blazers all season long. Very productive, very physical. Here's a look at Cedric O'Neal back out there now. Throws it outside to Lewis, who brings it in. And that delay made in making the catch helped the defense and Darren Pulliam get there. And this entire drive has been made up of some form of wide receiver screen. They consider it just an extension of the run game and a handoff. And Cochran will just come up to the line of scrimmage, and whatever numbers match up he likes the best, who's playing off, who's playing on, he'll just throw it to the receiver, and they're making chunks of yardage off it. Five yards here, three yards here, eight yards here has been very productive on this possession. Second and eight. Coach Dean telling us that uh, Reggie Lewis, you know, is a hard hat, lunch pail kind of guy. He has brought his lunch pail here today doing a little bit of everything. He's in the slot to the left. This is O'Neal bouncing out, creating space inside the 10. The five pushed out at the two by Pulliam. A 19-yard pickup for the freshman out of Dublin, Georgia. Well, Caden Cochran and the Valdosa Blazers are playing a numbers game with them, seeing how they play the outside receivers, and some things you just can't coach. Cedric O'Neal, again, bounces inside, then outside. That's all instinct. Amazing job running the football. And just a freshman. O'Neal back out there now for first and goal. From the one. To throw. Lewis again. Fights over the plane. Touchdown, Blazers. Nope, they didn't give it to him. The line judge, Matt Mount, runs in and says Fields brought him down and the knee hit the ground. Now, again, we have replay here. As the runner's knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. And you'll see Reginald Lewis right there. Great job of fighting back inside. The knee is down, and the ball is, boy, that's close. It's a good call, it looks like to me. Yeah. 
And again, it was the real long field goal, so he was down before the ball broke the play. Now it's second and goal. Note here, too, the Blazers, they never go into a goal line offense. David Dean breaking in, trying to get a timeout before the delay game. Offense, five yards to the previous spot, first down. Here's going to come the explanation. David Dean, good hustle, getting a timeout. Correction. Before the play clock expired, timeout. Valdosta State. First charge of the half. So Coach Dean saves his team five yards. They're knocking on the door, trying to make it 21 nothing when we return to Alabama. Hey, guys. That's how close Valdosta State is from making it 21 nothing here at the NCAA Division II National Championship game. David Dean getting the timeout in time before the delay game penalty on Caden Cochran. So now they go out for second and goal. Right, yeah, the point I was trying to make about Valdosta is that they never go into their heavy personnel except for right now down the goal line. Typically they spread people out and want you to play your base defense. Now they come out after the tie. The, tie, uh, the timeout, they throw a tight end in, they put their fullback in, and that tight end is an extra offensive lineman. Trent McGuire, the fullback, 36. There's motion. And Cochran keeps it on the sneak. And now it's a touchdown, Blazers. So the second longest drive of the year for Cochran and the Blazers is capped off by a quarterback sneak. They go heavy, they put two backs in the backfield and they quarterback sneak, I love it. Anderson makes it 21 nothing. Mr. Cochran sees his son lead a 13-play, 72-yard drive, six minutes and 52 seconds. Cedric O'Neal with the big, powerful run, the bounce outside all the way down to the one. And the quarterback punches it in on the sneak. The Blazers in great shape here in the first half. Cedric O'Neill put him on the doorstep. Caden Cochran did the rest. Valdosta State up 21-0 here in the second quarter. And part of the festivities this week are the Hall of Fame ceremonies for Division II football. Tyrone Poole, an All-American cornerback at Fort Valley State back in the early 90s, a Division II standout. John Mobley, Kutztown University, back in the early 90s as well, named to the Division II Team of the Quarter Century in 1997, both inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend, both standing by with our Paul Carpenter. Thanks, Damon. I'm with Tyrone Poole from Fort Valley State, John Mobley from Cutsdown, and John's son, Tyson Mobley. Both of you were inducted last night into the Hall of Fame Division II football. We'll start with you, Tyrone. What is it like to come back to championship weekend and be honored as a Hall of Famer? Well, it's a great honor to come back, uh, first and foremost, to be recognized as one of the best to have played Division II football and because I never played in a championship game myself while I was playing, oh, it's amazing to come back and see the, the energy and the atmosphere in itself. You know, you both were first-round draft picks, had long NFL careers, teammates in Denver. John, what was your sense of responsibility when you made it to the NFL for all the future Division II players trying to accomplish the pro dream? Well, I think, I think the most important thing for me was to represent well. Uh, coming from a small school, you know, you've always... Uh, You've always got that stigma about you that you don't belong and, uh, you know, you just work as hard as you possibly can and, and try to prove to everybody else that, you know, you're, you're capable of doing what everybody else is doing and, and being able to represent on that stage. Tyrone, as an elite cornerback, how did division football at the Division II level help shape your NFL career? I think it helped shape me with my work ethics because I believe sometimes you could be so successful on a certain level like Division I, things kind of be handed to you, but on a Division II level, you have to earn everything that you do, and you kind of translate it to the NFL. John, my partner in the booth, David Diaz and Fonte, 
played with you at the Denver Broncos in 1997. You guys won a Super Bowl champion. He said your all-pro status was because he went against you in practice every day. What's your response for DDI? I, I think I think that was it. He prepared me for what I had to face on the field. And, uh, uh, Doc, I think he's a great guy. Uh, we had some great times in Denver. You know, it's just a pleasure to know him. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Oh, John Mobley I actually played with both those guys. Tyron Poole uh, spent a little time with the Broncos too, but John Mobley and I was there when he was drafted. You want to talk about an athlete, the linebacker position. Great player. During the interview, a big completion of Massey, but there is a sack by Lawrence Virgil. 6'5, 278, and explosive. He gets to the quarterback for a loss. Back yeah. to the interview, you mentioned being there when John Mobley. We'll talk about that, but here we take a look at the explosive big man. Lawrence Virgil, you see his length, you see that move and the ability to turn his hips sideways. The length on the interior gives him a tremendous advantage, especially at this level. He set up the screen to Lewis. Hope read it well. Lewis had to wait for the ball to get there, so not much doing on that play. This defense of Earl Chambers is playing with such confidence right now. They're feeding off what their offense has done. And I tell you what, I, I love how fast they're playing. Earl Chambers and Seth Wallace, co-defensive coordinators for the Blazers. Take a look at Pope. He had 21 tackles against Carson Newman in the quarterfinals. So he has no problem finding the ball. But now third and 15 for the Rams. They empty the backfield. Smith now forced out of the pocket, and he will go down. Tyler Josie with the sack. The man with the big beard comes up with the big play. He sure has. Had a chance to talk to him during the week the other day out of practice. He talked about if we can stop their run game and get them one-dimensional, we think our athleticism up front will be a plus and a bonus. We think we can get to the quarterback, and they're doing that right now. So another punt here for the Blazers. That's why they don't like to kick very often. A very short kick by the Rams, so the Blazers will take over. And there's a look at Tyler Josie. Looking to shave that thing off with a championship ring as well, maybe. Valdosta up 21-0. NCAA Division II College Football Championship. Brought to you by LEGO. Build a moment together, one LEGO brick at a time. It's hard to David Diaz and Fonte in Florence, Alabama. All right, Max, thanks a lot. During the season, Connell Maynard's offense has averaged 42 points a game. Right now, they are being blanked by Valdosta State as the Blazers are back out there with the ball up 21-0. Eamon McEnany along with David Diaz and Fonte and Paul Carcaterra. Blazers starting off the season two and two after four games. They won the last nine straight. Now up 21 nothing. First and ten. They give it to O'Neal. Big hole. Loses it. Gets it back. That's when you know it's Valdosta's day. The fall NCAA championships continue tonight with the women's volleyball championship. Oregon will meet Texas for the national championship tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Oregon knocking off number one, Penn State. Texas looking for its first title since 88. Now stacked receivers again, but they give it to O'Neal. And it's across the 40, Donnie Owens with the tackle. Really impressed with Valdosta's, Valdosta's uh, offensive approach and commitment to running the football that David Dean has built in this football team. How they keep uh, and maintain a sense of physicality at the line of scrimmage by running the football with no tight end, just a five offensive lineman and the quarterback run threat as well. Neil now averaging 10 yards a carry. This is his ninth run of the game, and that average will go down. Big Barry trip. All over that play. You know when your coach calls you a stud ball that you make some plays. Hard to move in the middle. Well, this is where Cedric O'Neill learned to make that one cut. You can't always go backwards and look at the size of Barry Tripp. He's 24 years old and still has two years to play. It's a big man. 
All CIAA first team. Trips to the right. Cochran to throw. And that's too low for Jones. And that'll be third and one. And that time you see Caden Cochran, his feet got a little happy in the pocket. His mechanic broke down, and he had a wide open receiver there. All he had to do is play catch with him, threw that one in the ground. He hasn't done, done that very often here today, though. Coach Dean's club, one of four on third down so far. Austin Scott now the lone back. Three wide receivers in a trip set to the top of your screen. Fontavious Jones all by himself, bottom left. Cochran steps up, forced out of the pocket. Donnie Field, Carlos Fields with a great open field tackle. We talked about Caden Cochran being a 100-meter guy in high school. Watch Carlos Fields show the speed. You're going to see Carlos Fields right here. He's going to spy the quarterback up there. And watch his closing speed when Cochran can't find anything downfield. Watch him close and make the tackle in the open field. Outstanding job and athleticism. First charge. Please put the game clock to one minute and 46 seconds. 146. Thank you. So the Rams take a timeout. Trying to get something going here in the final 146 of the first half. Capital One Bowl Week continues today on ESPN as Chucky e. Keaton and number 22 Utah State make their second straight trip to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, taking on David Flewellen and Toledo's explosive offense. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl today at 4.30 on ESPN and also available live on Watch ESPN. Flewellen expected to return after spraining an ankle back in November against Akron, one of the most explosive players in the MAC. Big year for the Mac, obviously, in the regular season. And right now, here the Rams looking for a big return from Massey. Another boomer from Anderson. Massey's going to give it a try, and he gets tripped up right away by number three, Chris Kasperi. So a 46-yard punt, no return. Special teams continuing to be a strength for Valdosta State. Well, every time that Valdosta State has had to punt, they have pinned the Rams back in deep in their own territory. Once in the inside the, at the 8-yard line, the 10-yard line, and now the 12 or 13-yard line. Outstanding job punting the ball and, and really forcing the Rams to work on a long field. All right, you're Coach Maynard. You need points desperately. You got 137 to work with. What's the approach? Well, you got to let your quarterback make some plays for you. They're an excellent screen team as well. And you see Virgil breaking through to blow up that play. Smith dumps it off. Now he did not get it past the line of scrimmage, it didn't look like, as our officials have a meeting here. There's no foul for, for intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket, and the ball made the line to gain. Second down. I apologize, that looked short of the line to me. It was close. It, looked, it was very close. I mean, he backpedaled pretty far back there before he let it go, but it goes the way of the Rams. So now second and ten, five wide receivers. To the out. Catch made by Butler. First down. Two timeouts left to work with for Winston-Salem State. Well, Winston-Salem, too, they're used to working up-tempo. This is who they are and what they do. They've just got to get some rhythm offensively. Smith looking to set up the quarterback draw. Has space, has a first down. Across the 35, pick up a 13. So that will stop the clock momentarily. And mark it at the 38. Quick release there. Looked like Coach Dean wanted a timeout. Timeout. Veldos to say. Second charge with a half. Also, a 30 second. Timeout. Well, Coach Dean knew that he got stuck trying to substitute his personnel on the field, called the timeout to avoid the penalty. So that allows Winston-Salem as well, obviously, to stop the clock and talk things over. 
Smith with a big day against West Texas A&M. He threw for two and he ran for one in the 41-18 victory. Then the boys from Georgia went up to the cold of Minnesota, but had no problem with Minnesota State Mankato as they racked up 498 yards of total offense to return to the championship game for the fourth time this century. Winston-Salem State not used to playing from behind, certainly not used to having a bagel up there on the scoreboard this late in the game. Yeah, it's got to really be a shock for them. They've been so prolific through the course of their regular season and even in the playoffs. And people questioned about the schedule they played and something Valdosta State really felt has been to their benefit. How tough their schedule's been, their ability to play tough opponents week in and week out. Hit their ball loose. So it came out of his hand. Interesting here, Coach Dean off the timeout has thrown one of his top wide receivers. So let's take a look here. Ball just slips out of his hands. That is a fumble. Yep. His arm was not going forward. So there's a timeout here with 107 left to play. Second and 20. Not much gone your way so far for Coach Maynard. And the offense, one of the reasons we're talking about why they have the zero up there is the defense. Yeah, they certainly have. They created turnovers. They played fast against a team that was supposed to be faster than them. They did a great job uh, turn, making them turn the ball over on downs. And again, pressuring the quarterback and getting after them in every phase of the football game on all three levels. Outstanding job by this Valdosta defense. So there's a completion to Juwan Butler. Gets across midfield and tackled by Shontavious Jones, their standout wide receiver, out there playing cornerback on this possession, maybe trying to avoid the jump ball. So number one, 6'4", 193, the wide receiver. Now he's stuck out there. He doesn't know what he's doing. So they're going to have to take another timeout, it appears. Timeout. Valdosta State. Third and final of the half. 30 second timeout. So they get a first down. Plenty of time to work with in Valdosta State territory. Everything's still open, I would imagine, for yeah, the playbook. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And again, the tempo's starting to catch Valdosta right here, exchanging their personnel. We talked about Shontavious Jones being out there at wide receiver. They like the matchup with his height, trying to prevent the jump ball, an extra defensive back. But again, they get caught. I think they're trying to work him back out of the field or trying to tell him where to line up. I assume that he has a very specific role in that position in this type of situation. Coach Dean obviously uh, coaches up that situational football as good as anybody. Uh, but again, where you're not used to doing it all the time, boy, when the team lines up in different formation, different personnel grouping, uh, you know, you really got to know where your role is. Now, you would think they would be ready for the hurry up because it's pretty obvious that they yeah. need to do it. But Jones stays out there, the wide receiver, bottom of your screen, left. Watch him up and press man to man. You got to love this. Do they take a shot at him? They go screen. This is Jamal Williams. Hurdles his man and into the over across the 30. Jumped over Casperi. A 19 yard pickup. And the senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, showing his hops. Five wide receivers. Looking over the middle. And they do take a look at Jones, and a catch is made for the first down at the 10. A 20 yard pickup by Jawan Butler. Well, they really decide not to rush. Cameron Smith worried about his ability to scramble, and that lack of rush allowed him to survey the field and make that completion. Clock running. They go to the fade. Massey, not sure who that was intended for, but Massey makes the grab and gets out of bounds with 22 seconds left. Now again, Winston-Salem State with plenty of timeouts if they want to talk things over here. Two timeouts left, 22 seconds. Might want to save it to keep the running play 
on the menu. Yeah, with two timeouts, that's still an option right now. Kevin Brantley, bottom of your screen. They roll out. Did he get rid of it? Tevin Davis in pursuit, tripped him up. What's the call? And there's intentional grounding, a huge call. Intentional grounding, number six. Ball replaced the spot of the foul. Loss of down, third down. A huge call. This one obviously did not make it back to the line. Yeah, what a play by Tevin Davis. Under the situation, you're tired, rushing the passer. They come out in a two-back formation, maintain your dis discipline and containment of the quarterback on a quarterback keep pass. That is outstanding. Well, there's, there's a runoff, 12 seconds left. Again, two timeouts left for Winston-Salem State. Two seconds left because of the nine seconds. So there it is, third and goal. Now they're going to take a timeout. You mentioned the great play by... Tevin Davis interesting story when he was recruited by Valdosta State didn't qualify originally in the uh, Seth Wallace the off defense coordinator who recruited him and he made a promise to coach Wallace he said look I let you down but I'm gonna get eligible and I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna play for you and he lived up to that promise and now he's making big plays that play right there may be the difference from Winston Salem getting in the end zone or not before the end of the first half watch him number 46 he goes upfield great discipline and the timing of that is outstanding because you're in the rush, hurry up offense. You've been going after it. They change the formation of personnel. And instead of getting nosy and chasing the football inside, he maintains containment of the quarterback. So again, the penalty creates the 10 second runoff. So that's why this will be most likely without a penalty on Valdosta, the final play of the half. So you go from first and goal in great shape, two timeouts left, and now you need a desperation play. Well, and you just, you got to tip your hat to the defense of the Blazers. What they've done in this first half of play against one of the most prolific offenses and up-tempo offenses in Division II football is outstanding. So now the officials are ruling that they're giving them the 10 seconds back because they took a timeout. Referee was Craig Helser. So here in Florence, they put 12 seconds back up on the clock. So Winston Salem got the timeout. So five wide receivers. Smith. Hit as he throws. Throws it up for grabs. Knocked down. That's Barry. They're in double coverage. Jamal Williams was the intended receiver. You'll see the ball go up, but Cameron Smith cannot make the throw because the pressure of the defensive line of Valdosta. That's what makes that play not happen. He's forced to throw the ball high. Great coverage in the back end by the secondary. So now they have to go into the end zone. Fourth and goal. Six and a half seconds left in the half to Massey. Cannot make the grab. No flag. Or is there a flag somewhere out there? The offense is staying on the field. Maybe they don't realize it's fourth down. What an effort by Massey. Again, selling out to get the football. So there is no flag. Valdosta State will take over with two seconds left in the half. You'll see Cameron Smith. He takes a shot. He wants Massey. That's a great guy to target. He fights back across the DB's face, lays out for the ball. Just can't make the play. Good no call by the officials. Mel Magwood in coverage. So Cochran will take a knee here and punctuate a pretty impressive first half by the Blazers out of Georgia. It all got started with a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Matt Pierce. Cedric O'Neill with a big half on the ground. 78 yards on nine carries. And Caden Cochran with a touchdown as well. Defense coming up with turnovers and keeping a high-powered offense that averages 42 points a game out of the end zone. Much to the delight of Mr. Cochran and the Blazer faithful. Now let's send it down to Paul Carcaterra.
Coach, Winston-Salem averaging 42 points a game. You've held him to zero. What's been the point of emphasis defensively? Well, we've done a great job of putting pressure on the quarterback, and then those turnovers are big. And then also the two uh, fourth down stops, uh, those are those are drive killers for them. You know, they, if we can convert, keep converting on third and fourth down, that's going to help us out. You're right around 100 yards running the ball. How do you continue to have success on the ground in the second half? Well, we got to keep coming off the ball and mixing up what we're doing. We're mixing in our screens with our throws, I mean, with our runs, and our offensive line's doing a great job. And our perimeter guys blocking out wide are doing an outstanding job and giving us yardage. It's just a glorified run when we throw those screens outside. Thanks, Coach. David Dean, 30 minutes of football away from his second national championship as a coach. The Blazers, 30 minutes away from their third. They lead 21-0 at the half. Now let's join Max Bredos in the studio with the Sports Center halftime report. Thanks, guys. Aldosta State, they have the lead. Our own Winston-Salem State grad Stephen A. Smith hoping for a Rams comeback in half number two. Tell us how much garland you used to decorate your home last Christmas. Around the fireplace. I have no idea. Welcome back to the 2012 NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Winston-Salem State dominated action this year in the CIAA. And if they're going to finish up 15-0 in champions, they will have to pull off the greatest comeback in the history of the Division II NCAA Football Championship game. Welcome back to Florence, Alabama. Eamon McEnany along with David Diaz and Fonte. And David, every coach goes into the game saying, I want to execute well in all three phases of the game, special teams, offense, defense. Well, that's exactly what happened for Valdosta's David Dean. Yeah, they certainly did. In every phase of the game, they dominated and executed very well. And offensively, they got off to a quick start, opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Then their offense just kind of fed off that momentum. Two more touchdowns. But defensively, boy, they played lights out against a very explosive offense. Well, as you mentioned it, we got started with a bang here in Florence, Alabama on the opening kickoff, Matt Pierce. Yeah, we're talking about Matt Pierce takes it to the house, and that really got things going and got momentum in Valdosta's favor. Again, taking it all the way to the house for 96 yards. And then it was Cedric O'Neill, the offensive line, dominated the line of scrimmage, helped him really get things going in the running game. And then defensively, you're going to see number 31, Ryan Smith, cause a turnover. Again, forced Winston-Salem into three turnovers in the first half as Tevin Davis picks that one off. And then red zone defense is where they really shine again. We revisit your keys to the game. You're looking for some red zone dominance out of the Rams. Whoa, one for two right there, but defensively, they're also able to dominate in the red zone and then eliminate the explosive plays. They've given up four, but again, third down and fourth down, they were excellent. And then in the red zone, they were as well. And then although the Rams have been balanced offensively, turnover has been the difference for them in terms of getting things going and turning the ball over on downs. The half ended with the Rams coming up short in the red zone. They get an opportunity right here at the start of the second half on the kickoff. This is Sherman from the 10, across the 20. Gets out to about the 25. Let's check in with Paul Carcaterra down on the field. Damon, I just spoke to Winston-Salem head coach, Connell Maynard. I asked him, how do you generate some offense? You've been blanked in that first half. He said he's actually happy with the offense. They're out gaining Valdosta. They have over 250 yards of total offense. It's the turnovers that concern him. The two turnovers have not allowed his offense to get into any flow. I also asked him, what specifically can you do to really ignite this offense? He said, play action passes, get the running game going, and take some shots downfield. All right, Paul, they also turned it over twice on downs. So Maurice Lewis starts as your lone back. They go under center. Here is Lewis cutting back across the middle, across the 30. As they try to get that running game going right out of the gates. You know, the other thing, because of their lack of an efficient kicking game, they're not able to chip away at some points. And that's been a difference, too. That's why they're kind of forced to turn the ball over on downs. They've only made two field goals all season. And they're also not strong in the punting game, but they go back to Lewis here on second and five. Lauritsen with another tackle, number 74 for Valdosta, so that sets up a third down. There's big Lauritsen 
He's big country, they call him, and he's all country. Great job of dominating the center, Marcus Lawrence, the all CIAA center right there, maintaining his gap and making the tackle. He's made it very difficult on them inside on the running game. Here's a look at Marcus, the Gene Upshaw Award finalist for the best lineman in Division II football. So now third and three. Smith to pass. Here comes pressure. He gets away from it. Rolling out. Airing it out down the sidelines. Massey can't get to it. There's a flag. Looks like it's going to go against Wheeler. Pass interference. Number 21. Defense. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Well, that's what an athletic quarterback can do to a secondary. You'll, you'll see Ryan Smith miss the sack on Cameron Smith. That forces Dominic Wheeler to extend his coverage and causes the pass interference penalty. So it makes it first and 10 from the 48. Smith looking over the middle. Airing it out for Sherman, who goes up high, but can't make the grab. Make it Tevin Brentley. Lance Holder with the coverage. Holder had the fumble recovery in the first half. And there, blanket coverage to four, second and ten. And that's one thing this offense will do is they're going to continue to fire away. And it puts pressure on your secondary to maintain their discipline, the same discipline they had in the first half. Again, keep things in front of you. And they also tackled very well in the first half, which was big on the list of head coach David Dean. And second and ten, they bring back Robert Moore as the fullback, but movement on the line, Michael Sab. Second and 15. Don <laughs> Elmaner, a great player in his own right at Winston Salem State. And moved on and followed his coach. Great coordinator in the Arena Bowl. Arena Bowl now looking for some points here to the sideline. Dropped and picked off. Wheeler moments ago called. For interference, comes up with the interception there as Jawan Butler could not make the grab and another play that pretty much sums up the way this afternoon's been going. Yeah, everything's been going Valdosta's way. Again, a great example of that Jawan Butler, one of the outstanding receivers in the CIAA and in Division II football, lets the ball bounce right off his shoulders to Dominique Wheeler. Again, you're going to see the protection that the offensive line gives Cameron Smith and watch him deliver that ball. It's a strike right on the numbers. And that's a play that Butler will make 99% of the time. Great route. Comes back to the quarterback. Does everything you're supposed to. Smith and watch him deliver that ball. It's a strike right on the numbers. And that's a play that Butler will make 99% of the time. Great route. Comes back to the quarterback. Does everything you're supposed to do except for make the catch. <laughs> So Cochran and the Blazers take over at their own 49. O'Neal in the backfield. And this is O'Neal running to his right. Good job by the Rams stringing it out. Darrell Pulliam with the tackle. So he picks up two yards, second and eight for Coach Dean. And go right back up to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers to the left. Robertson to the right. Cochran looking to throw. Can he make the catch? They give it to him. Robertson keeping it off the ground. Had his hands under it, they say. So that'll be a first down. For the Blazers. Caden Cochran had the protection. Again, the ball a little bit off the mark, but Quinn Robinson wants to focus on the football. Kind of tipped it to himself on his back. Boy, that looked clean. So here's O'Neal running up the middle. Casey Davenport there for the tackle. 
Coach Maynard pleading his case. With the field judge, Mike Block. He's giving his best case right there. <laughs> Stacked receivers to the left and the right here on second and eight. They give it to O'Neill, who bounces his way to the 35. Gets tripped up by Dominique Tate. And now there's a late flag. Yes, sir. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 15, offense. 15 yard penalty into the run. Third down. That goes against Reginald Lewis. And that's going to back up Coach Dean's club. Uh, that was close. Working a little extra, trying to get a body on another defender. This was, I thought that was after the whistle. And David Dean telling us this week, Reginald Lewis, hardest working player on the team. As he worked through the whip, past the whistle on that one. So that backs him up third and 20 from the 50. They look to cash in on another turnover by their defense. Cochran with time all day back there, but he can't hook up with Robertson. So the Ram defense forces a punt. Boy, great protection by that offensive line. He had all day to throw the ball. I'm curious why he didn't give a shot to Shontavious Jones. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage down the field at six foot four. He can play that jump ball and high point it as well as anybody. I think it was worthy of taking a shot. Anderson and the punt coverage team has been excellent here today. Massey back at his 11. Now they go rugby style. A low wobbler right up the middle. Massey thought about it. <laughs> Smartly he runs away from the ball. So the Rams D comes up with a stop after the turnover. They'll get the ball back after the 30-yard punt. Still down 21-0. The PBA on ESPN. Back to Florence, Alabama in the second half of the NCAA Division II National Championship game. All Valdosta State so far this afternoon as they lead 21-0. Monday night football coverage continues on ESPN starting at 6.30 with Monday night countdown served by Applebee's. Then at 8.30, Mark Sanchez and the Jets take on Chris Johnson and the Titans. Jets, Titans, Monday at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Sanchez and the Jets looking to make it three straight. I thought you were going to say the surging jet. The surging. It looks like it carried away with. The, you know, if I, if I had a nickel for every time I heard ugly win the last couple of weeks in the New York area. Rex Ryan will take it. And the Rams looking to take some points here, but they miss fire on that deep ball for Jamal Williams. Good cut. Puts by Lance Holder. They've tried a little bit of everything. They've rolled Smith out. They've tried the run game. They just haven't been able to sustain everything, anything, obviously. They've picked up yards. You know, they've got explosive plays. They just can't finish things. Now here's Lewis tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Squirts through for a short game. Again, it'll be a third and long conversion attempt for the Rams. And you got to remember, this is the team in Winston-Salem that came in plus 19 in turnover margin. They're usually the ones winning the battle. I mean, Valdosta is also very good at plus 12, but something had to give, and so far, the turnover advantage is gone to Valdosta. So they empty the backfield on third and seven. Five wide receivers. Smith looking to scramble, trying to stay alive. Over the middle, has a man catch made. Brantley into Valdosta territory. Tevin Brantley with the catch, and again, it's Smith keeping the play alive. Again, Cameron Smith's ability to extend the play, it is so difficult and stresses the secondary of any team when you have a quarterback that can extend the play. He recovers the hold up that long, extremely difficult. Smith looking to his left, pumps, brings it back. 
And that's going to be almost intercepted by Wheeler. That one was pretty close to becoming 27-0 Blazers. And Dominic Wheeler also realized as he was expressing his agony and the realization that he had a pick six, <laughs> forgot to go and hurry up. And you're going to see, again, Cameron Smith extends the play and then gets a little careless with the football. Boy. Trying to play quick. There was a flag. Might be offsides or illegal shift. Referees or officials discussing whether there were 12 men on the field or not for the defense. Illegal substitution, number 86, defense. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Second down. So Lawrence Virgil didn't get off the field in time. So that makes it second and five. Smith steps up in the pocket, looking for six. Massey knocked away by Holder at the last second. We mentioned the conference and the level of competition that they play in the regular season. Is this a play where the speed of Valdosta, you don't see that in the regular season? Well, it's just Lance Holder playing that deep safety position perfectly and has the athleticism, again, to play the football in the air. And you're right, that's a ball that they probably score on in their conference. Holder a converted corner. Now third and five. That one knocked away. That's Jeremy Grable. Now again, another fourth down for Coach Maynard and the Rams. And so far, this Valdosta defense has been up to the challenge. Makes it a little bit more difficult. And you got to stop someone for four downs, not just three. Uh, you know, puts a little pressure on you. They've been able to spawn all game long. 0 for 3 on fourth downs here today. Fourth and five. Smith backs up. Looking for the quarterback draw. And it's there. Pope came up, but too late. Smith lunges out for the first down. And usually, so far, Valdosta has been keeping a linebacker in to spy and take care of that Cameron Smith. And I think Chris Pope was trying to tap his defensive line and go, look, I am out of the box. One of you guys got to spy the quarterback. Smith now looking for six again. And Massey and touchdown. Smith to keep throwing the football down the field consistently finally breaks away to Massey the speedster on the outside now here's Alejandro Suarez on for the extra point and he sneaks it in there so Smith kept looking for Massey on the deep ball a few plays earlier, it was knocked away by Holder. But this time, Smith with time. Massey makes the grab and gets his foot in. The Rams are on the board in the title game. starting to make some noise here as Winston-Salem State breaks through and gets on the board. It's 21-7 with 9.25 to play in the third quarter. Cameron Smith delivering his 43rd touchdown pass of the season. As the Rams go eight plays, 
Watch 80 his, yards. Yeah, watch this matchup right here. This is Massey right here. He's going to get a free release and go downfield and run a corner out to the end zone. This linebacker is concerned about the run here. So he's cheating inside by the quarterback, and he's not going to give – he's going to give Massey a free release on the safety that's 12 yards, 14 yards off the ball. Let's – going to break out and make a 29-yard touchdown pass. Let's check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, guys, if you recall, just a couple plays before Massey went into the end zone, that pass was broken up. He came off the field upset, talked to his position coach, went back on the field, adjusted to that route, beautifully caught the touchdown pass. When he came off the field, he told the entire fan base on the Winston-Salem sideline, it's not over. We're in this game. He now has seven touchdowns in four and a half plus of action in the postseason. Last time Winston-Salem kicked off, Matt Pierce went 96 yards for a touchdown. He wants to get his hands on it again here. They go for the squib. And Chase Matthews, Chaz Matthews, excuse me, grabs it and hits the turf. He's a linebacker, probably not used to running with it. Probably trying to drill it off the front line there for an onside kick, just couldn't execute it. So Cochran back out there now. This time it's Austin Scott in the backfield. So the Rams with a little bit of life and momentum here after being dormant for the whole afternoon, and here is Scott. Barry tripped the first man there. Senior out of Snow Hill, North Carolina. When you get a sense that that touchdown has kind of reignited this Ram defense and put the pressure back on the Blazers' offense. Uh, it's a two-possession game right now, and they've got to get something going here. Second and eight movement. Looked like it was on the All-American, Ryan Schrader. The left tackle. False start, 72. Offense, five yard coming from the previous spot. Sam. And instead, it's on the senior mesh, Woko Mate. Well, it was a, it was a uh, penalty that stalled their drive in the last possession, too. Uh, those are things that kill drives. And they're a smart veteran football team. They can't afford to do that. That's a good point on that last drive. A big 15-yard penalty on Reginald Lewis. Cocker now forced out of the pocket. He got rid of it dangerously. They make the catch, Robertson. But that'll be a loss as Marcus Campbell is coming in from the edge. And Justin Wilkerson there as well. There's two things right there. One, the pressure of the defensive line of Winston-Salem Sa State collapsing the pocket, and then Cochran throwing the ball dangerously out to the flat with Loft on it, and then Roberson making a catch he should have been going for incomplete. Those aren't the things you do when you're trying to close out a ball game. Third and 21. Do they play it conservative, or do they take a shot with a 14-point lead? Cochran steps up. Hit as he throws over the middle. Gerald Ford cannot make this sensational one-handed grab. Ford's been quiet. Haven't really mattered as you're up by 14, but Wilkerson again bringing the pressure on that one. That was the matchup they were looking at. The outstanding offensive line for Valdosta. Again, getting pressure with the three-man rush. He's going to climb in the pocket and throw the ball up over the middle. I tell you what, a great job by Malcolm Rowe to avoid making the big hit. Instead of hitting the defenseless receiver, he goes up, makes a play, and avoids contact, incomplete pass. Massey gets bumped, and there's another penalty, an easy call as Matthew Browning interfered with Massey making the catch. Make that Dominique Wheeler getting in the way. So they will tack on here. No return, obviously. But 
I tell you what, it's interesting how quickly this changed in terms of uh, uh, momentum in this football game, in terms of penalties now. Uh, it's Valdosta right now that's its own worst enemy the first at the time. Foul for a block is legal. Kick catch interference. Number 82. Kicking team. 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Well, he got a little confused there because 82 is the return man. Winston State, Winston Salem State, feeling it. They have the ball back when we return. So you can make it great this holiday. Get your favorite. The fans in red making a little bit, no, little bit more noise here in the second half than they did in the first half. And Coach Connell, Connell Mayner says, we want to get the ball in Jamez Massey's hands. And they've been trying to do that all afternoon. Oh, well, and you can see why. And again, it's Cameron Smith ability, no matter what the success rate has been, is continue to find his number one big play receiver, Massey, yards after the catch. And his speed has been the difference. And again, they continue to throw the ball vertically down the field. It was a matter of time before they broke through the ice and scored a t the first touchdown of the game. 21-7, but it feels like it's closer than that right now. And here you see his number, seven catches for 141 yards. Earlier in the postseason against Shippensburg, he had eight catches, two touchdowns, and 167 yards. But now they bring out the fullback, and they run it to Lewis. To the left, big hole. Inside the 30, pushed out of bounds. Matt Pierce pushes him out of bounds, but not after he picks up 21 yards. Again, I love how they come back in the two-back formation. Look at the big fullback get the kick out block on Ryan Smith. And that's the only space Maurice Lewis needed. Nice chunk yardage in the running game. Nice to get back to pounding the football. They're going to try it to the right. No, they're throwing it back. And they had it well read, but Pierce is going to get called for holding. Now Pierce is going to look for a taunting call on Massey as Massey got it right in his face. Holding number 26, defense. 10 yards to the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Matt Pierce was in great position here. He's closing. Just don't grab the jersey. You're in position to make that play regardless of whether you grab that jersey or not. Can I argue that he was in great position because he was holding the jersey from the whole time on? No, he's breaking on the football. He's going to make that tackle for a loss. you got to have the ability. You have to have faith in your ability to close. Now they run it to the right, Lewis, and that hole closes quickly thanks to Pope. Chris Pope, another busy afternoon at the Mike linebacker position. He is the general of this defense. Lewis bottled up so far this afternoon, 47 yards on 14 carries. Second and 11 after a loss of one. Well, it was penalties on their own possession that really caused them to have to punt the football. And, and then now it's penalties on the defensive side of the ball uh, that are given Winston Salem a break. Lewis bouncing it outside, gets down to the first down inside the five. Raymond couldn't bring him down. A gain of 11. And the Rams are knocking on the door one more time. I love the fact that head coach Connor Maynard was going back to the running game and not abandoning it, giving some bounce back to their offense and letting Maurice Lewis get going on the offensive line, a break from just pass blocking. And offensive line in the fullback, fullback Robert Moore, 37. He has been a force on this series. So now first and goal from inside the five. Lewis straight ahead. Not much room to move there. Pope got there first. And this is where the Blazers' defense has been good. They've given up yardage, but in the red zone, they've shown the ability to tighten things up. Can they continue to do that right now? This time, Moore, the fullback, lines up to the left of Lewis. Smith going to keep it. 
He gets hit hard from behind. Spins his way. Did he lose it? Yes, he did. Jeremy Grable gets in there for the strip. Now, what's the call? Hey, recovered by Valdosta State for a touchback. So another turnover forced by the Valdosta State defense. This one, the biggest of the game. Absolutely. Ball security, the lack of it on Cameron Smith as he is fighting for yardage. And actually, it's the Valdosta State defender that carries him towards the end zone. Look, when you're fighting for yards, boy, that ball has to be high and tight to your numbers and shoulder pads. The ball gets loose. They do a great job of stripping it. Probably the biggest turnover of the game right there. Rabel with the strip, Pope with the recovery. <laughs> oh, Maynard can't believe it. Look at that expression on his face. Got to put the ball away. We were on the two. So a big stop here and a big momentum swing. Cedric O'Neill with a short game. Now again, this is the fourth turnover. So far, Valdosta State has zero points off three previous turnovers. Now let's see if they can cash in here, but that was more preventing points than taking advantage of. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, either way, their offense has to find a way to get something going, control the tempo of this game right now. It's up to that offensive line to take charge now. Second and eight. The zone replay goes to O'Neal. Carlos Fields with the tackle. Bring up third down for Cochran and the Blazers, third and four. One of seven on third down conversions for the Blazers. Rams showing pressure. Cochran sees it. And if he tries to hook up with Gerald Ford again, 19 and White's been quiet. Cochran looking that way. Went to Robinson instead. And they give him a completion along the sideline. A little mix up there between Robertson and Ford. Ford was supposed to go vertically down the field. Both players in the same spot. And Robertson, what a job going up making the ball. Critical third down conversion. You'll see both the receivers over here to the left of your screen. Again, Ford's trying to make a play on the ball and almost knocked it out of the hands of Roberson. Nice concentration by Roberson because he got popped as well by Pullion. So first and ten. Watch the receiver the screen outside towards the stacked receivers there. It's O'Neal running to the left. Fighting hard trying to get to the 35. Mungin with the tackle. This is the NCAA Division II Football National Championship. Valdosta State in the white out of the Gulf South Conference with a 21-7 lead over Winston-Salem State University. The Rams of Winston-Salem coming in with a perfect 14-0 record out of the CIAA. Now second and five, trips to the right. Cochran looking back to his left, looking for Jones, throws behind him. Larry Hearn in the coverage. Caden Cochran has to slow things down right now. He had a chance to hit Shantavius Jones outside. One-on-one -on -one coverage. His feet get happy, and he throws an inaccurate ball because his mechanics break down. That's a pass you've got to complete. Jones, top of your screen, right, but left, excuse me. Trips to the right. Cochran looking for Ford. He makes the catch for a first down. Fields in coverage. Ford, the 2012 Gulf South Offensive Player of the Year, just made his first catch of the game. Well, you see how accurate Caden Cochran can be when he sets his feet and delivers the ball down the field, Gerald Forge is going to hook up, present his numbers, and the ball's there right on time. Back receivers to both sides for first and ten. Out to Jones on the screen. He gets brought down by Dominique Tate.
Jones last week, four catches for 122 yards and a touchdown. He is a big man that's hard to tackle out there by smaller defensive backs. And that's the game they're playing. Are you going to play our inside run game, or are you going to play our receivers one-on-one -on -one outside? And this drive started on the 20 after a fumble on the one-yard line recovered in the end zone. Here's Austin Scott. He gets the first down before getting drilled by Dominique Tate. This is where, if you're Valdosta State, you load up behind those big boys up front and just milk the clock and take your time. Coach David Dean was talking and said, hey, without a doubt, our offensive line is the strength of our team. They, can, they need to lean on them right here, right here. And so far, they have been delivering, taking care of that defensive front of Winston-Salem State. Back to Scott. Quickly close to a first down, brought down by Owens. He hit the hole quickly on that one as Connell Maynard now sees this one going the other way again. And you'll see the defense of Winston-Salem again showing one front, then shifting out of it. Nice job by the offensive line of Valdosta. Again, to recognize the front, a little delayed draw, and pick up positive yards. Scott again, this time to the left. Tate comes up, but can't finish him off. Owens does. Good job by Tate to slow him up in the pursuit by Carlos Fields. That is close. We'll see if they're going to give him a we'll say third down. Third down. Great hustle by Donnie Owens. Defensive tackle to get there and make that tackle short of the first down. Pure hustle. Five on the play clock now for Cochran. This time it's O'Neill. And he gets the first down, so the drive continues. You know, you take a look at this offensive line being the strength of the team, and then you take a look at Ryan Schrader, the two-time All-American. A remarkable football story. He's only played football three years, and he's been an All-American all three years. No high school experience. Yeah, that's incredible. His first year at junior college, and he is a tall, athletic guy. At K-State, they saw him on the basketball court and said, why aren't you playing football? Uh, he's found his way there, and he's got a big upside. O'Neal follows Schrader, the hole he creates for a good pickup. Schrader was 6 feet 170 as a senior in high school. And now he's 15 minutes away from a national championship. Look they at the big man right there. They, Tell they put it on us. From not playing football at all to most likely playing on Sundays, but he has 15 minutes of college left, and he wants to seal the deal with the championship. Valdosta dominated early. Winston-Salem State came to life, but a critical turnover sets the stage for the final 15 minutes of regulation of the Division II title game. Everyone deserves the gift of all-day pain relief. This season, Discover Aleve. All day pain relief with just two pills. Well, it's that time of year again. Time to get a holiday deal on a Ram truck. A truck that will pretty much haul anything. Welcome back to the 2012 NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Valdosta State. Up 14 points with the ball as we start the fourth quarter. See the fear of the beards. Many of the players growing beards since early July. Now they're 15 minutes away from the third title in school history. Cochran to throw, looking for the end zone. Knocked away at the final minute 
Final second by Daryl Pulliam. Look at the protection this offensive line gave Cochran. He's got time, and there you're going to see Gerald Ford. That ball is just a little bit late and floats. That's one that you got to put on a rope right on his numbers. So Valdosta started one of seven on third down conversions. They have connected on their last three. So they go to stacked set top of your screen right here on third and three as they try to put this one away. And instead, they give it to O'Neill on the ground. Keeps his legs moving for the first down inside the 20. O'Neill over 100 yards already and running hard. Cedric O'Neill, a true freshman, has really shown some toughness, not only here today, but over the course of the season. You're going to see his ability. That, this is mental toughness right here. He knows he's close to the short down, sh uh, first down yardage mark. And again, look at that effort. I mean, that's, that's refusing to go down. As advertised, as Coach David Dean says, he gets better as the game goes on. And they go right back to him. He has a hole. And he gets taken down. Malcolm Rowe was there first. Now let's check it. You know, it's getting time for Valdosta right now, too. Offensively, they're feeding the football to Cedric O'Neill. At some point here, Caden Cochran is going to have the ability to pull that ball and pick up some nice yardage. Second and six, obviously in no rush here in the fourth quarter. Back to O'Neill. He was close to another first down. Dominique Tate with the tackle. Valdosta State in Georgia, as we mentioned, and Coach David Dean says, you know, the guy he reminds me of, Cedric O'Neill, and I'm not saying anything other than getting stronger as the game goes on, is Herschel Walker. And when you say that in the state of Georgia, that says a lot. You are, <laughs> you are impressed by your freshman running back. Well, what's impressive is how they maintain their toughness in terms of running the football without a tight end, without a fullback. That's a big credit for that offensive line. And another third down conversion attempt, and there's a flag. And it's going to be a false start, so this one's going to go back to five yards. False start. Offense. Number 15. Five-yard penalty for the previous spot. Third down. And we talked about Valdosta State and how proficient they are in the red zone. 47 touchdowns coming into this game and only six field goals. That's pretty darn good. So O'Neill stays out there on third and seven. They change up the formation and come out with trips to the left as you see how much time they have taken off the clock on this drive. Cocker looking in the end zone, has an open man, feet down, Robertson, touchdown. <laughs> 17 yards, the 14-point swing is almost complete. Robertson, great awareness of where the end line of the end zone was. Both feet in. Anderson's kick is good. So after the Rams fumbled it on the one and Valdosta State recovered it in the end zone, the Blazers go 80 yards. Take off plenty of time off the clock. More importantly, they lead by 21 again. Valdosta moving closer and closer to another title. Valdosta State, 13 minutes and 8 seconds away from the third title in school history. They just went up 28-7 thanks to Quinn Robertson's fourth touchdown catch of the year. Watch Quinn Robertson right here. He's going to be the middle receiver right here. He's going to run, shake the defender, and hit the middle of the field there. This safety's going to jump Reginald Lewis right here on the inside. No middle safety help, and he's going to be wide open for the touchdown. Look at the protection by the offensive line. Cochran's able to set his feet. 
wide open in the back of the end zone, Quinn Robertson. So they finally cash in on a turnover going 80 yards. The seven and a half minutes is the longest drive of the year. The 17 plays ties the longest drive of the year. Robertson caps it off. Now they're starting to sense it. There's Massey. There's Jamal Williams back to return. It'll be Massey from the four. Across the 25, brought down from behind. Let's check in with Max Bratos in the studio. Time now for a studio update from the Gilded New Mexico Bowl, a game that's currently on ESP. All right, Max, thanks. Here now, the Rams were so close to making it a one-score game. Now back down by 21 with 13 minutes and one second left to play. They come out with the empty backfield set, five receivers. Smith gets hit and goes down. Tevin Davis again. Tyler Josie there as well. And that's four sacks on the day by this Blazer defense. They knew if they could force the Rams to be one dimensional, they felt they had an advantage in their athleticism. Now Smith hit as he throws, incomplete. Tevin Brantley couldn't bring it down. Again, it was Josie applying the heat. When you look back at turning moments in the season, Tyler Josie against Texas A&M Kingsville in one game, four sacks, three forced fumbles, and he came up with a sack and a forced fumble on fourth down with the game tied at 31, and that turnover led to the go-ahead touchdown. Here's Massey. He drops it. Massey. Thinking of yards after the catch. You're going to see him, the ball's right on the money. Takes his eyes off it just for that split second. Trying to make yards after the catch. Got to secure it first. Robertson back to receive the punt. There to kick it away. And it's another short one off the side of his foot. It will roll across midfield, but not much after that. So the Blazers already up 21. Will take over with great field position. Fear the beard indeed. San Diego State football. SPN, the fourth meeting all time. The previous three meetings each decided by six points or fewer. And that's on tap tonight. So we've seen Billy Donovan get all fired up and Sean Miller. I'd pay just to see those guys play one on one. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, huh? Here now the Blazers with the ball and a 21-point lead. Flag on that play. To the run by Scott. Holding. Number 62. Offense. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat. First down. And that goes against the captain, Cam Short. Gave an impressive speech yesterday at the banquet. Talking to him, he was realizing that, you know, part of the beard, the motivation, you know, these seniors, when they arrived, Valdosta just won a championship. And sometimes you think you win a championship just by showing up. And they realized that the clock was running out on them and they needed to rededicate themselves and really get after it. Absolutely. And uh, he did get a great talk there tonight. Very inspiring. Now here's the draw to Scott. The fall NCAA championships continue tonight with the women's volleyball championship. Oregon will meet Texas for the national championship tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Texas, the runner-up, just back in 2009, looking for their first title since 1988. Cochran on second and 18 with time. Now the pocket collapses and he has to run. Carlos Fields gets there to put him down. And that'll bring up third and long. Fields, the CIAA Defensive Player of the Year. Junior out of Henderson, North Carolina. 
Every time Cochran has decided to scramble, he's been there. So is his closing speed. Now the Blazers have converted their last five third downs. That's why that last drive was so impressive. This one, though, is third and 13. What's well, so impressive about that last drive is it came after a turnover, and they're able to capitalize on it at a critical point in the game. Cochran, again with time, goes short to Scott. Scott gets taken down by Kendra Reed, short of the first down. And they send out the punting unit, Daniel Anderson. Massey back to receive. They fake it. And they cannot hook up. They went for the jugular up 21-7. Looking for Trocon Gay. And he rolls the dice. Daniel Anderson, boy, he had his uh, receiver open. It's kind of a punt pass option there. That one almost went pick six the other way. I was going to say, Dominique Tate would love to have that play back. And we're back to Florence, Alabama. Winston-Salem looking to capitalize down by 21. The craving for chocolate Ooh. is all grown up. Ooh. Jared presents beautiful natural Le'Veon. The Blazers have been on fire pretty much from the start here, and they lead by 21 with just over 10 minutes to play. And three years ago, the NCAA instituted the Elite 89 Award to honor academic achievement and athletic excellence among its members, student athletes. This award is presented to the student athlete with the highest cumulative grade point average participating at the final site for each of the NCAA's 89 championships. And the 2012 recipient of the Elite 89 Award for Division II Football with a GPA of 3.946 in business management is Justin Roberts from Valdosta State University, the junior backup quarterback. Congratulations. Smith airing it out in triple coverage. And Brantley cannot go up and make the catch. When Coach David Dean was giving him that award or announcing it at the luncheon the other day, he said, I want to know who gave you that B. He goes, don't worry, it was my freshman year. That's right. <laughs> Typical coach, right? <laughs> what happened wrong? No, I'm just joking. Everyone was having a good laugh with Justin yesterday at the awards ceremony. He's got to work on his beard a little bit. I mean, the rest of the D-line and O-line, boy, their beards are, you know. Typical, <laughs> typical O-line taking a shot at the pretty boy quarterback who can't grow the beard. Here is Smith on the QB draw, getting the first down into Valdosta State Territory. Pickup of 11. Might want to stock up on shaving cream in the Valdosta area tomorrow because they are going to need it in mass as they, all these players try to lose these beards. Completion to Eric Wolf. I'm a little surprised David Dean decided to go for that fake punt. And I understand going for the uh, going for the jugular and everything, but they've done such a good job of pinning Winston Salem State in, deep in their own territory, and still a three possession game. Now Smith dumps it over the middle to a wide open receiver, but he, Butler, Butler can't bring it in. Now in his defense, and this may be coach speak, the play was there. As you mentioned, I mean, if they execute like they run it in practice, they get that first down and they run the clock out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was there. I mean, and that's why I can appreciate part of it, but, you know, it's interesting. But then when you that see play was Winston, there too. Yeah, that play was there too. It's a game of execution. And they have out-executed uh, Winston-Salem State here this afternoon in every phase of the game. So that brings up a third and five. Again, they empty the backfield. Go with five wide receivers. And again, Smith tries the draw. They are ready for it this time. Ryan Smith. Not this time, number six. One way defensive line coaches and D linemen deal with an active quarterback is they'll run a stunt. They'll go outside and underneath to again to close down some of those running lanes for a quarterback that wants to run with the ball or to, da or to draw down or something like that. D line games and stunts up front are one way you handle that. So 
Yeah. Another fourth down for the Rams. Fourth and nine. Smith lost it down the middle, and that will be knocked away. Chris Kasperi got his hands on it, but couldn't bring it in just as well on fourth down. So another stop on fourth down. And I think Matt Pierce was going over to Chris Kasperi going, hey, you didn't want that interception. Well, <laughs> bat that ball down. Trying to make a play and go up. That's the one you want to bat down. Yeah, he wanted it. Yeah. He Chris did. probably said to Matt, that's easy for you to say. You already have eight in your career. <laughs> Come right. on, man. I got two. <laughs> We're on national TV. That's right. <laughs> Here is O'Neill padding to his stats, but not very much as Casey Davenport takes him down hard. This is the NCAA Division II National Football Championship game. Valdosta State out of Georgia with a 21-point lead on Winston-Salem State. Eamon McEnany along with David Diaz, Infante, and Paul Carcaterra. The Blazers looking for the third championship in school history, the first since 2007. We opened up the game with a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Matt Pierce and have not looked back since. Second and 11 here for Cochran and the Blazers. Pressure coming, gets rid of it, almost gets intercepted by Malcolm Rowe. Capital One Bowl Week continues today on ESPN as Chucky e. Keaton and number 22 Utah State make their second straight trip to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, taking on David Fluellen and Toledo's explosive offense. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl today at 4.30 on ESPN and also available live on Watch ESPN. Utah State brings a six-game winning streak into that ball game, looking for its first postseason victory in 19 years. Here's O'Neill cutting back. Gets right to the marker and maybe the first down on third and 11. And again, Cedric O'Neill, just a freshman. You're going to see the patience he shows in the run game. Very difficult for young players that are fast to show that kind of patience early on in their career. He's really mature in that sense of, of how he runs the football and how he understands to allow blocking schemes to develop at the line of scrimmage. In the quarterfinals, he went for 194 yards and three touchdowns on 15 carries against Carson Newman. They are going to let him ride out this ball game, it appears. There's another nice cutback to the middle. Look like Davenport and that Ram line had strung it out. Well, you mentioned it earlier how Coach uh, David Dean talked about he's a volume runner, and you've seen as the game has worn on, he has gotten better and more physical in how he's running the football, understanding time and place in the game securing the football and running for positive yards. Second and four, back to O'Neill. Spinning, turning, whirling Dervish. Refusing to go down. Looks like he's going to be short of the first down, which will create third and short, and he gets a breather here. As Scott comes in. And again, you'll we'll see the mental toughness right there, fighting for extra yards. Look, he's had a bunch of carries in a row. It's easy to say you're tired. And, and look at that. And, and then he goes off the sidelines after his partner, Austin Scott, comes in for him, pumping up the crowd. you got to love this. He has 140 yards on the afternoon. Most the Rams have given up to a rusher all season. And now Scott out there for third and short. He gets popped behind the line of scrimmage by Davenport. Looks like Davenport didn't like the spot they gave him. So fourth and short, you see that offensive line contingent saying, let's go for it. The team, the crowd. The coaches are the one that has to pay the consequences, though. But they got to love it. Their offensive line has been dominant so far. 
Ah, there's a penalty. False start. False start. 72. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Okay, there it is on Mesh Rokamati. Okay. I had it right. And that, that, that's just. Uh, that's just tough. You sit there lobbying for the uh, the attempt on fourth down, and, and then you jump off sides. And that has been the one problem so far here today for the Blazers. 12 penalties for over 100 yards. Sends up Anderson to punt. That's a good high kick. Massey loses it. So another turnover by the Rams, the fifth of the afternoon. Mel Magwood there to come up with it. Nothing's going to go right when you lose the turnover battle 5 nothing. You'll see it. He's trying to field the football again. Ball security. I, I, when Winston Salem comes back and looks at this tape, I mean, they're going to see things that I don't think they ever saw during the course of their 14-0 run. And, and, and in every phase of the game, uh, they've been beaten. And the biggest thing is special teams. And it's amazing to me, and it's really kind of a testimony that people talked about the lack of strength in their conference, how you could go through a season undefeated with this, without a real field goal kicker, uh, the punting that was on display here, and the mistakes they made in the special teams game. That just tells me you never played any close games uh, because that's the difference. They were tested by Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the postseason. Smart had to come off the bench after having, after injuring his shoulder in the CIAA championship game. So they won that one 21-17. But yes, you're right. For the most part, they won going away in those 13 other bowl games. Well, that's another thing. It really tells you how good they are offensively to be completely lacking one phase of the game and still go 14-0. And, and here's Scott. Riding hard to the goal line. And again, it's worth mentioning here as Valdosta State gets closer and closer to the third championship in school history. They started off two and two and really had to get rededicated and say, don't look ahead past anything. Treat every practice like it's the most important practice of the year that day. And like I said, they recommitted themselves in the offseason. They realized when they look back at last season, the last three games, lost in a total of a minute and 42 seconds. They had t-shirts made up in the offseason. They did extra work. They reminded themselves how close and precious victory is. Now third and goal. They get it off in Cochran. How sweet that must feel. Caden Cochran keeps it and finds the end zone. That should be the dagger and the exclamation point on a championship season for the Valdosta State Blazers. Here's his dad. He made the long trip. After all they've been through the last 18 months, the last week, his son and this team have allowed them to enjoy things and been distracted from real life. And now they're sensing a championship. But it was all because of a miscue in special teams by Winston-Salem State. Another turnover set up the Blazers, and it was Cochran cashing in. Valdosta State getting closer and closer. Oh. Hey. NCAA Division II College Football Championship is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Florence, Alabama. Just over three and a half left in regulation. The Blazers up by 28 points. Caden Cochran starting to feel it, and he just came up with his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. 
And you'll see Valdosta again. Cochran's been handing the ball off to Cedric O'Neill and Austin Scott on just this inside zone, trying to peel it back. And now the Rams are going to commit everyone down inside. Cochran's going to keep the ball and walk in the end zone. Perfect timing. We knew it was coming, and they saved it for the finishing touch and touchdown to give him a 35-7 lead. As we detailed earlier here in this game, his family losing a house in a tornado in May of 2011, and then last week, while at his game in Minnesota, their home burned down, and the family here to cheer him on and celebrate what they hope is a championship. And Williams will bring it out. And he gets hit at the 18. Now let's take a look at today's Reese's perfect play. And if you got here a play late, you missed it. It certainly was. Because Matt Pierce takes it 96 yards to get things started for Valdosta. And that was just a sign of things to come. It wasn't always easy, but they were consistently winning in every phase of the game. An example of special teams really dominated here today by Valdosta. Here's a look at Matt Pierce, eight interception in his career, but the play he'll be remembered for was the opening kickoff in the 2012 title game. Smith throw comes up short. So now it'll be second and ten for the Rams. Smith steps up, lets it fly over the middle, short of Massey. Three top ten teams highlight a college basketball doubleheader tonight on ESPN starting at 8 as West Virginia takes on number three Michigan in the Brooklyn Hoops Winter Festival, followed at 10 with number five Florida battling number eight Arizona in a rematch of last season's overtime throw. All part of Holiday Hoops presented by Kate Brewer. Change quarterbacks here. Anthony Carruthers with the connection to Juwan Butler. Now Carruthers played very well filling in for Smith when Smith got hurt against Elizabeth City State. As it brings a little different skill set to the table. They try some more bootlegs and spreads, spread offense, move him around a little bit more. And he gets hit before he can get rid of it for a sack. Tyler Josie. The fifth sack of the afternoon for the Blazers. After we are finished here on ESPN2, jump over to ESPN3 for live coverage of the trophy ceremony. What an emotional moment it'll be for Caden Cochran and his family in the Valdosta football community. Screen to Massey. He gets brought down by... Chaz Matthews. The others out of Charlotte, North Carolina. 12 touchdowns on the year, just three interceptions. Over the middle, miscommunication there, falls incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth down. David, you started to tell the story as we get closer and closer to the minute 42 mark. The offseason in their conditioning, when the Blazers went past the locker room and they went into the locker room past the stadium, they saw a minute 42 on the clock. And at the end of every conditioning session, as they get ready to douse Coach Dean, how good that must feel. Every session ended with a minute 42 of something, whether it was core work, sprints, Lifts everything was 142 hard holding on for weights for that minute 42 to realize That's How important finishing things are was it You're right? right they were six and one they lost those last three games to end up six and four And that was the difference between a nine win season Or a season without going to the playoffs and they realized that the time was Ticking away well then to start this the year off they lose their very first game to Saginaw Valley State in a little over a minute, and, and it really sent him reeling. That's when the team just really rallied. 
And there, Lance Holder comes up with an interception. Another turnover forced by the Blazer defense. Make it six. And again, forced to throw. The defensive backs just getting deeper than the deepest. They ain't coming over to make a play. Number eight, Lance Holder, once again, just reading the quarterback's eyes, making a play on the football. So Caden Cochran comes out there for the final 138. Again, Coach Dean winning it in his first season in 2007. And now 98 seconds away from his second championship as head coach of Valdosta State. Cochran runs and slides. Think of what this young man has been through this season, his family. Talking to some of his teammates, he just has so much respect for him. And he's getting a great moment here as they make a change, and he gets the save of the moment coming off. How sweet it is. You know, his teammates talked about how much they respect him and what he's done. and. The attitude he's maintained his whole family. It's really been an inspiration to the whole team. And again, we will hear from him and his teammates in the post-game ceremony on ESPN3 as Justin Roberts gets out there for a carry. Two and two to national champions. How about that? How about that? And you got to love this pure playoff format to get in, play your way in, and have a chance to win it all. You mentioned starting off two and two. One of those playoff wins was a rematch victory over West Alabama, which was their second loss of the season. So that will do it. What a moment for David Dean, champions again. What a feeling that is for this team, that program, and that family. For the third time in school history, for the second time under that man, Valdosta State is national champion. Paul Carcatera is standing by down on the field with Coach Dean. I'm with the wet Coach Dean, an elated fan base. Coach, you started the season two and two. You were ranked 17th in the final Division II football poll. How was this championship run possible? I tell you, our kids stuck together. They played hard. They uh, they had a will that they were not going to be defeated after we lost to West Alabama. They put it all together. It's, we we preach family here, and they stay family all the way. Ultimately, what was the difference in this ball game? Our defense, no question about it. You hold a team that can run 42 points a game to seven points, lots of turnovers in the ball game, then our offensive line and running game, we're able to run the football. On. Coach, I think you're gonna enjoy this victory. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. So there is the trophy. And we will have more of that on ESPN3. We will have the championship trophy presentation, the MVP. Sweetness all around for Valdosta State as they dominated this one. Caden Cochran, the emotions he must be feeling. We'll hear from him. That's all from Florence. Join us over on ESPN3, now on SportsCenter. More on the Big East basketball schools making it official and is a Cy Young Award winner on the move. Let's send you out to the studio for a SportsCenter special. Congratulations to Valdosta State.